Hello there, Brendan Raymond here. Just thought I'd do a movie review, um, something different. Well, I've done them before, but I've usually done them on my blog. I thought I would, for a change, do a video review. So, um, I just beforehand, um, I probably won't have images or video from the actual movie itself to display anywhere during here, so you'll have to go off my description. And secondly, this will be a spoiler review, though I'm not going to be going through like detail, detail, detail of everything that happens in the movie, but there will still be spoilers in this review. So, last night slash early this morning, I saw I was at the midnight screening for Civil Captain America 3 Civil War, which is the third part in the Captain America trilogy. They seem to like their trilogies, Marvel. Um, seems to be kind of the standard of what they're doing, which I think is, is, is a good thing to work around. Um, and pretty much from our first glimpses of this, we knew that this was going to be big. Um, and, and with each trailer and TV spot, you kept seeing more characters come in and more characters and more characters. And, you know, they were announcing Black Panther and they were announcing Spider-Man coming in. And, you know, all these big names that were being added into it. And it was like, hang on, this, this is seeming more like an Avengers movie rather than a sole character movie. Um, and you do get a bit of that. In, in the feel of it. Um, but I think that something that they did really, really well was balancing that interplay between, okay, we've got all these characters, but it's still, the focus is still on Captain America and his story and where he's going with it, um, counterplayed against the story of Tony Stark as Iron Man. But even just as, as Tony Stark, um, and then kind of side along that the story of Bucky Barnes um, and how that's developing. Um, so I think that they've done that very well, and and one of the ways that they've done that is that each character they've kind of given a little moment to shine, um, both. Often, both in um, in dialogue and in their their character and their personality, and also in the fight scenes. Um, the big fight scene being um, the classic one from the trailer, where you see the two um, two um, you know armies coming coming back, coming at each other, sort of thing. Um, that's kind of the, the big fight scene. Um, between the, the two teams as such. Um, and you really see everyone kind of having their moment in there. Um, but particularly with characters like Ant-Man, Spider-Man, um, I think particularly those two have comparatively smaller roles than, than all of the others and don't get as much screen time. But they don't feel like they've been left out at all because of um, because of what, what they are given and because of the roles that they do play. Um, so I think that was done exceptionally well. Um, in the continuation of the story on from before, um, it follows on really, really well, um, picking up the story from Captain America 2 with um, that continued interplay between um, Steve Rogers and Bucky Barnes um, and, you know, Steve still trying to get Bucky back and that kind of happening and, and dealing with a lot of what's happened in, in Bucky's past. Um, in the past, that is the Winter Soldier, and so that's that's very much what is brought to bear here, and what starts a, a lot of and and what oh 
Okay. Sorry, my computer just went to sleep. That's uh, not very professional there, is it? <laughs> okay. Um, that's what puts all into motion a lot of what does happen in um, in Civil War. Um, and I think it's it's very interesting seeing how there's there's a different tone to it than than there is. Um, for example, in the comics. So, I'm um, um, full disclosure. I do not read the comics. I have not read the comics. Um, bad or something. Yeah. Um, but I'm aware that in the comics, Civil War is very much focused around registration and around going, you know, revealing superhero identity. Obviously, in the superhero in Marvel Cinematic Universe that is being created, that's kind of a moot point. Um, you know, a lot of the characters so far have not had masks and have been interacting with the press or the government or etc etc and their identities are very well known. Um, so registration does not come up at all. Instead it's all about going hey, you guys need to have someone to answer to. You know, the the Avengers need to have someone to, to answer to. Um, and and that's um, championed by Thunderbolt Ross, who is from way back in, in Hulk, um, from, you know, but when the Marvel Cinematic Universe was kind of in baby stages. Um, so that was, that's interesting seeing that link back there again. Um, and then Tony Stark as well, the two kind of together bring this. Um, and I think that's done very well. Um, and, and it's, it's, it's convincing argument. It's, it's not like, oh yeah, we need to do this because we need to do this. No, it's, 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 uh, compelling and um, emotional argument that's brought not just you know numbers and facts but hey this this person um, and, and these people and all that sort of thing um, I think that was done very well um, and I think throughout the movie um, you know even though it's a Captain America film um, I think throughout the movie, Tony's side isn't played as, oh, you know, they're always going to lose because it's a Captain America film. So, you know, ah, oh, they're the bad guys. It's not played that way. Um, certainly there's an element of, because we're following Captain America, we see a lot more of his side of the story than we see of Tony Stark's. But Tony Stark also does get his opportunity to go, hey, this is why I'm, I'm doing what I'm doing and this is why I'm seeing that this is, is the right way to go and this is what needs to happen. And you see how that clashes and interacts and I think that's done really well. Um, yeah, so I thought that was, that was really good. Um, so I think the story was really, really strong in this. Uh, in this movie. Um, I think that Black Panther was introduced really interestingly. So, um, with um, the whole country of Wakanda first being introduced here and, and that coming up and Black Panther is, um, coming from Wakanda and being the son of the king and that kind of all comes up and is that that whole storyline is introduced in early in the movie, um, and he's first introduced as the person rather than the hero, which I think is done well, um, and then kind of when when the hero comes in, you know, people who know that story will 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 recognise who it is, but the idea is that it's a surprise that the two are actually linked together and are the same person. 
Um, so I think that's that's done well. Um, again, as always with with Marvel movies, the hero is, is done really well. Um, you know, particularly with with characters like Ant Man and Spider Man. You know, they're always going to have that humorous aspect to them. And Spider Man in particular is is done really well. I think. Um, and just hovering on that that for a moment, I think um, I think it was Tom Holland, I think is the name of the actor who plays him. I think he does a very good job at playing a younger Spider Man and a very smart Spider Man, um, but also <laughs> he he does a very good job of of having the you know the the constantly talking the. Um, and he very much seems like a bit of a, a fanboy kind of figure, even, um, you know, around these great superheroes. And, oh, he's little Spider-Man. Oh, that was, that's, oh, I'm sorry, I'm hitting you. Um, it's, it's quite amusing um, seeing that interplay there. Um, I think it's, that's done very well. Um, um, Black the character of Black Panther... Again, I think he's done quite well. Um, his his character is is a lot obviously less talkative than than Spider Man's character is, um, but I think his his character and personality certainly shines through very nicely. And I think it's going to be interesting to see how that develops in the, in the movie because I th I believe that's one of one of the next ones that's coming up fairly soon memory I can't remember I, I really can't remember exactly um, I think that might be next year um, yes and then what else do we have we had Captain America Bucky Iron Man I've touched on um, I might touch on Iron Man's team a bit so obviously there's Iron Man Spider-Man I've already touched on then you've got Vision, somewhat obviously, um, perhaps. I think Vision was done quite well in this one, um, because obviously this is this is the the first movie after Avengers two that Vision has been in, and it's very interesting to see how they're trying to humanize Vision, who is an artificial intelligence but then combined with the Mind Stone. So, um, you know, you see him, for example, walking around in normal clothes um, when he very much appears like an android robot sort of figure. Um, so that, that kind of jerky sort of um, mismatch is quite strange. And then almost the semblance of some emotion creeping in there as well. And you go, ooh, ooh, I wonder where, that, where, where that's coming from and why that's happening. Um, so perhaps that's because of the interplay between the artificial intelligence and the Mind Stone. Perhaps it's something else, bug in code, who knows. Um, but I think that was done very well. Um, and then um, you've got... Romanov. Um, again, you've got the interplay between um, Romanov and, and Barton, so the, the Black Widow and Hawkeye, um, who are of course on opposing teams. Um, but you get the sense that the, um, and in partic particularly in the major battle, you, you kind of saw that against each other because they were, were fighting each other at one point and. And Scarlet Witch kind of knocks one of them out and says, you're pulling your punches, <laughs> um, sort of thing. You, you get that kind of witty banter between them for, for that moment there, um, which is quite amusing. Um, I think it's done well there. Um, and, and again, I, I really love how Barton's character is played out again here like it was in Avengers 2. I think that was done really well, a continuation of that character onwards. Um, I think it was done really, really well and loving how that, that character storyline is being portrayed. 
um, the Romanov um, and Rhodes. Rhodes is an interesting one because um, obviously if, if you've seen the trailer then you'll see that um, there's there's a part where he gets very severely wounded and he doesn't die. Um, spoiler. Um, um, but he gets very severely wounded. Um, and it, it's interesting because Rose is probably one of the most, one of the more one-dimensional characters, I guess you could say. You know, he's, he's an army man, and that's about it. You know, he's the, the big guns and the, the army and just the soldier, and that, that's kind of all it is. Um, and he's, he's very much always kind of the one who tags along with with Iron Man, and he's kind of just wherever Iron Man is, he, he is as well as support. Um, but you don't see much of his his own character, I guess, coming to the front. Or when it is, it's it's always kind of again part of the military personality. So maybe it's in stubbornness. Maybe it's in um, it's that sort of thing, I guess. Um, but but here, seeing him him wounded and then afterwards trying working to recover from that, you see a, a bit of his, I guess, more the the effect of that mortality on him. I think is is well played. Um, and, and you get, I guess, that sense of, you know, a, a soldier accepting, you know, um, you know, accept, accepting, you know, his, his time, I guess, in that, in that sense. And I think that's done very well, particularly um, remembering, I, I remember that line back from the first Avengers where Tony Stark is going, you know, we're not soldiers, you know, very much that complete opposite, you know, from Tony Stark to Rhodes, of, of Tony Stark being very much not a soldier, being a civilian, being the scientist, and then Rhodes being very much the soldier. Um, so two very different men ending up in um, the same suit sort of thing. Well, not, not exactly the same suit, obviously, but do, doing something very similar. Um, so I found that interesting. Um, cool. Um, on Captain America's side, we have um, obviously Captain America. We have Bucky, um, who is obviously kind of a central character for a lot of what happens. Um, we have Barton, who I've mentioned. Um, we have, um, Wanda, um, one of the, the surviving Scarlet Witch, let's try to remember her last name, um, and, and her character is, is, is also played very well and, and focused on a bit, um, particularly because it's, um, in light of what happened in Sokovia that a lot of what is happening is, is coming to bear. It's called the Sokovia Accords that that they're being told that they need to sign. Um, you know, this agreement that they'll come under check of the, the government, the United Nations sort of thing. And so a, a lot of that that story kind of circles around her, you know, in a sense. Um, and it's interesting seeing how her story is, is kind of coming a little bit more to light as well. And I think that was done good. Quite well, um, and also seeing, I guess, how strong her powers are, because obviously she has quite significant powers. Um, and then Ant Man, um, and I think that's that's played very well. And there's there's a nice card that they threw in there. Um, it's interesting seeing it come out this early, I think, um, but I think it was done well. Um, and I'll, I won't, I won't spoil that one. So I'll, I'll let you find that one out for yourself. Um, 
but when you do spot I think there's an interesting um, Disney reference because Disney now owns um, Marvel and also Star Wars um, so you, you might see a little reference there um, so I, I think that that might be why that reference is allowed to be in there perhaps because Disney owns both properties um, Wow I'm waxing a lot more lyrical on this than I thought I would okay so obviously there's the clash between those two sides but then there's also obviously a kind of a, a grander scheme of things that's happening so like I was mentioning before this is kind of surrounded around Bucky now you might have seen um, crossbones in the trailer that's pretty much just at the beginning and ends pretty quick so crossbones is you know not an issue essentially um, so what is the issue is this this other guy this is a uh, um, who had his family in Sokovia who essentially does his best to pit the Avengers against each other which if you have seen Batman vs Superman is, it kind of rings true of what happens there as well with um, you know Lex pitting Batman against Superman talking about the recent movie I haven't seen any other ones um, so I was interesting seeing a couple of parallels there um, and so after this big battle um, it, you know it, it kind of builds up to this point and then it, it narrows the focus so it narrows the focus down to just Captain America, Bucky Barnes and Iron Man and kind of Black Panther as well but not so much um, he's, he's kind of in there, but just a little bit, um, but mainly those three. So Captain America and, and Bucky go chasing after this guy who's done all this bad stuff that was blamed on um, Bucky. Uh, and Iron Man and Tony starts chasing after them and then suddenly goes and finds out that hang on, oh, this this wasn't Bucky, this was this other guy. And goes, okay, I was wrong about that. I still think, you know, we need to come under this, this stuff, but let's get this guy first. Um, and then they find him in Siberia, and there's kind of a bit, a bit more of a storyline with Winter Soldier associated to that. Um, I think that's done, again, fairly well. Um, I think it's interesting seeing kind of more of Bucky's past coming out as, as the Winter Soldier. And there's also <laughs> a, a nice homage there to um, the one of the next movies that's coming up with, with Marvel, with the Spider-Man movie, um, if, if you pick that one up. Um, um, I think that's done well. Um, so yeah, they come across, the, across this guy, and it seems like he's, um, it, it seems a bit of an amusing, it seems a bit of a strange confrontation, because he's essentially just locked himself in a room, and he's got, you know, these, these three approaching him, and it seems like it's just, you know, okay, why, what, what's he doing? Obviously, he's just going to be taken away. But then he shows the ace up his sleeve, um, and he shows shows this this extra kind of piece of information um, that that he happens to have, and that pits and that turns Tony against both Steve and Bucky like a hundredfold. Like you know, before it was a disagreement, now it's absolute you know now it's personal I guess now it's absolute hatred um, perhaps not quite hatred but you know a deep you know needing to go this the, yeah yeah it goes a lot deeper than than what was before um, it becomes very 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 personal for Tony um, and 
you might be able to figure out what, what that is um, based on what, what has already been shown of the Winter Soldier's past, and if not, then you'll see it. Um, and so it launches into a battle between the three of them. Um, and this other guy kind of just walks out and goes, my job here is done. Um, and so the three of them kind of fight it off and mouse again. But I think that was done very well um, in, in that, you know, the, the movie is, you know, about civil war. And I think something that was interesting in the Batman vs Superman is kind of you had this big clash, but then it was like, oh, we've got this big guy. We should probably go fight him. And then everything was kind of forgotten. Whereas in this one, you think you have that, but then it goes, no, there's actually, but you think you have that, you know, there's the big clash and then they go to fight the big bad, but then he's not really a big bad. He's just turning them against each other and he plays his final card to turn them against each other again. And it works. And instead, of, so, you know, first you get this massive battle with everyone, but then you get this really intense battle with just the three of them. Um, and it gets, you know, really close, really intense, really brutal. Um, and I think that that was done really well to kind of refocus it back on this, um, in, I guess, primal nature of it being, you know, Captain America versus Tony Stark against Iron Man, sorry. Um, and uh, this is the one moment that I absolutely love where they pay a bit of a homage to the kind of the image of the Civil War, which I think is, is from, I'm pretty sure is the, this is the classic image from the comics. They have it also in the movie um, as, as a frame, as, as kind of a, a long scene, not a scene, a long frame kind of that, that they have there. I think it's beautifully done. Um, but yeah, so that wraps up. I won't say which way it goes. Um, that wraps up. Nobody dies. Um, and then kind of, you know, Captain America heads off and kind of leaves, essentially. And goes, you know, I leave the Avengers to Tony. But, of course, all the ones that, are on, that were on Cap's side are now locked up because they were going against all that the government was saying. So they're all locked up. So they're no longer the Avengers, all their stuff. Is um, and so all that, you know, Tony's got left is him, Vision, and Rhodes, who is now incapacitated, and Spider-Man, who is still young, young. And then... Um, and not really Romanoff anymore either. So, you know, he's got two and two halves <laughs> sort of thing um, left of, of his Avengers, um, which isn't much to be going on for a new Avengers. Um, so it's going to be interesting to see how that plays out. Um, but then kind of in the last note to... From Captain America to Tony Stark, he sends him a letter and goes, you know, I know it didn't work out so well, but, you know, this this is kind of what, why I did it. And, you know, I'm sorry for everything that happened. Um, but, you know, I just want you to know that if you need me, I'll, I'll be there with, with my guys. And you kind of see him rescuing the, the guys from the prison sort of thing. Um... And, and you you definitely get the sense that, you know, even though they they had this massive scuffle and, and fight, that they didn't end on, you know, like, really bad terms, that there's still a link between them and that there's still a connection there. Um, there's, there's definitely bitterness there, um, but there's, there's also a connection there. I think that was very well done. Um, in 
in terms of how it links forward, I think is quite interesting because um, obviously you've got the link forward with with Black Panther and with Spider Man. Um, um, with, with introducing both of those characters, and I think particularly Black Panther was exceptionally well done. Um, and there's a mid credit scene that pertains to to him, um, and that just kind of wraps up the story a little bit neater. Um, um, I think that was done very well. Um, and Spider Man, I think again. They did a great job of introducing the character and getting people excited for a new Spider-Man movie, um, which is pretty hard when they've already had two, when there's already been two goes at doing Spider-Man. People are like, what, another, another Spider-Man? Another different Spider-Man? Um, but I think they did a good job of, of, of doing that. Um, I'm not sure which movie is supposed to come first, but I know that there's also Doctor Strange that comes out at the end of this year. Um, and I didn't see anything that linked into that, so I thought that was interesting. Um, but perhaps it was too different. Anyway, that's my review for now, and I will see you next time.